Let's talk about products of symmetry operations. When you do a symmetry operation on a molecule and then you follow it by another symmetry operation, you often will gener generate a different symmetry operation that is still a valid symmetry operation of the molecule, right? So by two, you still have to go back to your same original orientation. Um, let's do an example. So suppose I take ethylene oxide. So this is an epoxide. We have carbon one, carbon two, and then we have four hydrogens. And these I will label, I guess, A, B, C, and D. So um, this molecule, <coughs> excuse me, has a few different symmetry operations. So one is the C2, down this oxygen. And then there's a sigma V in the plane of the board, as well as a sigma V going into the board here. So this actually has the same symmetry operations as water. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means later. But you can see it has these three symmetry operations, as well as the identity operation, of course. So if we were to first do, for example, a C2, our new orientation, so if we do the C2 about the central axis, the oxygen stays in the same place, but we flip carbon 1 and carbon 2, carbon 1. And then similarly, so we're rotating around here. So no matter what, we can just draw our atoms. They should be identical. Just the label of them will change. So if we do this C2 rotation, suppose we're going counterclockwise. So here we're going in and then out. So C, which is going back, will now come forward. So C is over here. This must be D. And then again, B is going to go in the back, and A is over here. So this is our, after doing C2, we still have ethylene oxide, but now just which, if we're keeping track of which atoms they are, they're different. OK. And then suppose we then go to, let's do sigma V. Um, we have two sigma Vs. So for uh, just kind of clarity purposes, let's suppose we're doing, let's call this sigma V in the plane of the board sigma V. And we'll call this one sigma v prime, just for clarity. So if we're saying we're doing a sigma v operation, we're doing it in the plane of the board. So what will happen is if we redraw our ethylene oxide, we've mirrored from this spot in the plane of the board. So if we look at our labels, C2 and C1 are in the mirror plane. So they don't move. So this is still C2. This is still C1. But C and D have to switch, so this becomes D, this becomes C, and B and A switch because we're mirroring in the plane of the board, it's A and B. So what you can see here is this final orientation is still a symmetry operation from the original orientation, but it's a different symmetry operation from starting from here compared to over here. So if we can look at which one it is, we can see C1 and C2 have to be different, and then but C and D are still both in this kind of back and front orientation at A and B. So what this actually is, um, if we want to think about it, going directly from the starting orientation to this final orientation, we've done a sigma V prime. So we could denote this as saying that C2 followed by a sigma V. By convention, you read right to left, meaning that C2 first followed by a sigma v, and this equals sigma v prime. And then so these are products of symmetry operations. Um, we'll do a couple more examples in class, but suffice it to say, by doing a bunch of symmetry operations, you can generate like a multiplication table and find out all the symmetry operations that are available for any one molecule. Um, oh, an obvious one, perhaps like, for example, if we had here C2 by C2, this is going to be equal to E. And E is also a symmetry element that's present in ethylene oxide. So you could build up a huge table if you wanted to, given the number of symmetry operations available for every molecule. And we'll get some practice doing that in class.